Before we get into this video, if you haven't watched my previous video on the FNAF 1 Complete Strategy Guide, I heavily encourage you to. The FNAF 1 Guide goes over some mechanics that are used in all four of the FNAF games, but they're especially useful for understanding the strategies in this game. With that being said, let's get into the video. Throughout this challenge, FNAF 1 was by far the easiest and most consistent of the four games. But even after beating it, the joy was short-lived. I knew what was to come. I knew what everyone had said about the next game. It was time to beat FNAF 2's hardest difficulty. It was time to beat 1020 mode, otherwise known as Golden Freddy. FNAF 2 is significantly more difficult than the previous game, with no doors and 11 animatronics now gunning for you. To explain the basic mechanics of FNAF 2, you have two vent lights and a flashlight to see any incoming threats. Instead of doors, your defense revolves around putting on a mask to fool the animatronics. When an animatronic enters your office, or is directly in your vent and can be seen from the vent lights, put on the mask as fast as possible, then take it off after they leave. For office animatronics, you can take the mask off the moment the blackout stops and still be okay, but for vent animatronics, make sure to wait to hear some sort of indication that they're gone. Usually they'll be like banging in the vents to indicate that they've moved out of your office. That's so lit. Do you possibly want to play zombies with time? This will work on all of these characters. But for these two, you'll need to adjust your playstyle a bit. Starting with Foxy, flash the hallway constantly to keep him at bay. Go too long without flashing the hallway and he'll jump scare you. I'm going to take some time here to explain what this blank flashlight means. The blank flashlight indicates animatronic movement in the hallway, which means any of the animatronics that can spawn in the hallway could be there. This means that it's possible for Foxy to be in the hallway, though you can't see him. So you should never slow down your flash for them, despite not being able to see Foxy. The puppet requires you to wind the music box in the prize corner. Let the music box go for too long, and you'll get a warning on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If it runs out, the puppet will jump scare you. Note that if the music box is about to run out and you see a red triangle, flash the light in the prize corner as you pull up the cameras to wind the music box. Oh, I caught him. This can sometimes stall the puppet for just long enough that you can wind the box without it escaping. With all these mechanics to worry about, FNAF 2 can get really overwhelming, especially on the later nights and in 1020 mode. Now with the basic mechanics covered, we can go over the strategies. In order to understand the modern FNAF 2 strategy, we have to go back to the first victors, when players first started playing FNAF 2. Back then, the 1020 strategy wasn't much different from the strategy used in the base game, just with pixel perfect timing. Oh Look It's FNAF was the first victor of 1020 using this strategy. To summarize this strategy, Oh Look It's FNAF would buffer taking the mask off by holding his mouse cursor near the bottom of the screen, meaning that on the first possible frame, he would take off the mask. This will be important to note for later strategies. He would then check the left vent first, flash the hallway while moving over to the right vent, then check the right vent. If no vent animatronics were present, he would pull up the cameras and wind the music box. Winding the music box is a bit complicated, so I'll explain it now. The music box makes a tick sound in addition to the jingle that it plays. Players then use this to measure the proper amount of time to spend in the cameras while winding the music box. Oh Look It's FNAF would choose how long to wind the box based on the position of the animatronics, particularly Foxy. If you wind the box for too long without flashing the hall, well... I don't care. I, bro, I, I so don't care. This early strategy seemed pretty solid, except for one crucial character that I haven't mentioned yet. Come on, it's 5am bro. Come on, move, 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 move!
No! No! Oh my god, dude! Dude, you're so lame, bro. God. Come on. Go now. Go now. Go. 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 Bro. I swear to God, this motherfucker. Nope. Dude, I... I'm, I'm gonna love the fuck out of Toy Bonnie, bro. Oh. Why is the game called Golden Freddy? Why is the mode called Golden Freddy? The mode is Toy Bonnie. Literally him just being there, man, I was dead, 100%. Toy Bonnie is the single animatronic that can completely ruin your run just if he feels like it. Doesn't matter how far along you are, any one Toy Bonnie encounter can result in immediate death. What makes Toy Bonnie so difficult is that he's a combination of vent and office animatronics. Other vent animatronics, such as BB, Mangler, or Toy Chica, will leave you after roughly 5 seconds with the mask on, and office animatronics will simply enter your office causing a blackout sequence, and will then leave after 5 seconds. Toy Bonnie combines both of these aspects and will wait in the vent, then launch a blackout sequence like the office animatronics. This would be manageable except for the fact that Toy Bonnie waits before entering your office. The time that he waits is completely based on RNG, or random number generation. Toy Bonnie has a 50% chance every 0.5 seconds to start his blackout, but only if no other animatronics are present, which in this game is almost never. The reason that an animatronic is always present is because of the office animatronic queuing system. We'll go more into this later, but for now, just know that multiple office animatronics can be waiting to attack you and start their blackout sequences, but one can only attack every 10 seconds. Since the chance that there is some office animatronic waiting to attack you on the next interval is extremely high on Golden Freddy mode, Toy Bonnie will always go for his other movement option. When the animatronic is present, which is always, the chance becomes one third every second making an average Toy Bonnie wait time of 3 full seconds. This not only drains the music box, but also makes Foxy way more aggressive and hard to deal with. With Toy Bonnie, Foxy, the music box, and all the other stuff in this game to worry about, FNAF 2 is generally regarded as the hardest of the first four FNAF games. So how did I combat all of this? This is going to get a bit complicated, so bear with me here. The movement opportunity system from the last game returns in this game, and the vent animatronics have an interval of 5 seconds to move. This means that when the player has the mask on during a blackout, holding the mask until 5 seconds have passed will completely negate any of the three normal vent animatronics. This can be done by waiting an extra 0.75 seconds before pulling the mask up, as opposed to pulling it up immediately like in the original strat. Here's a more visual example of the mask timing. Don't hold your cursor near the bottom of the screen. This is what the first strategy was using, and this will buffer you pulling the mask up. This means that it'll be pulled up on the first frame that the blackout stops and the office animatronic is no longer in your office. You instead want to wait until you can barely see the office through the eyes of your mask, then flick the cursor down and pull the mask up. This will ensure that you take care of all the vent animatronics, but also that you aren't in the mask for too long for a foxy jump scare. This completely invalidates the left vent meaning you only need to camp the right vent in order to see if Toy Bonnie is there. This became known as the right vent camp strat, and made the game significantly less RNG based. This was the strategy that I chose to use going into the 1020 mode. I had used this strategy in order to get to 4am multiple times, and one 5am run. But after that 5am run, I fell into a huge slump. I couldn't seem to get a run past 3am. And when I died, the deaths rarely felt like it was my fault. It was always Toy Bonnie waiting for too long or my monitor being forced down too fast. I had attempted this 2020 mode in the past, and I had always failed. It had just felt impossible, and this time was no different. But you know we aren't going to stop here. It was time to find a new strategy. Finally, we can now get to the most optimal strategy. Credits to Shooter25 for uploading and describing how this strat works, it was a huge help. This strat takes advantage of the interval system coded into the game's movement opportunity system. We were trying to use this interval system during the right vent camp strat, but one simple invention changes everything. With the timer now here to track the night, here's a quick breakdown of how this strategy works. This strategy primarily focuses on setting up the office animatronics attack and the music box patterns to counteract Foxy's attack interval. We can do this by looking at the ending numbers on the timer. Each night is 7 minutes long, 
And if we start a timer when the night starts, we're going to be focusing on times ending in 1.5 and 5.5. Times ending in 1.5 will be right around the time you'll be pulling up the cameras to wind the music box. Times ending in 5.5 will be right around the time you'll be pulling down the cameras to meet an office animatronic in your office, then put the mask on. When you put the mask on, obviously make sure to wait at the extra 0.75 seconds, and then after checking the right vent, you should be around the next time ending in 1.5. Then, simply pull up the cameras again and wind the box until the next 5.5 time. This is almost a completely perfect strategy that eliminates RNG, but there are still a few factors to look out for. First, dealing with Foxy. I struggled against Foxy a lot in the right vent camp strat, and struggled with him a lot too at the start of this strat. But I noticed one simple detail in this strategy that changed everything. Hold on, hold on, hold on, slow that shit down. Hits five. Oh, I don't know. He goes only 5.5, I think. He goes on like late five. He's waiting. Like, he waits a while in that mask. Like every other animatronic in the game, Foxy also works on an interval system. Essentially, Foxy can only kill you at certain points in his interval, even if you haven't flashed the light at him. The reason this is important is because of the way we have our time set up. Always drop the cameras between 5.5 and 6.0, and never before 5.5. Dropping the cameras too early will still keep you in Foxy's killing interval, but if you drop the cameras after 5.5, he won't be able to attack you as long as you flash him after the blackout. I know it sounds weird that waiting in the cameras longer will actually prevent you from getting killed by Foxy, and I thought the same way too, but Foxy can only kill you on specific timings. The next problem with this strategy is when you're forced to go off cycle. The reason this strategy works is because of the animatronic queuing system I mentioned earlier. This, in combination with the speed of the office animatronics on 1020, means that there will likely be a blackout on every single time you drop the cameras. However, a blackout is not always guaranteed, and this is when problems arise. Since Foxy can't jump scare you during blackouts, not having a blackout is actually the worst case scenario. When you pull your cameras down and aren't met with an animatronic, there are two situations you have to look out for. First, if you pull on the cameras and Toy Bonnie is in the vent. Like no surprise, Toy Bonnie is still a problem in this strategy. When Toy Bonnie is in the vent, you want him to match the time of a normal office animatronic blackout. This can be done by trying to bait him out with the mask on an interval of 5.5, meaning that you can stay on cycle despite not having an immediate blackout. This can sometimes mean you have to wait until the next 5.5 interval without winding the box, which can sometimes mean just waiting in the office and flashing the hallway. But with this strategy, you usually have enough music box time to spare. If Toy Bonnie is camping the vent for a bit too long, pull the mask up and flash Foxy before pulling it down again, since Foxy can still jump scare you without a blackout going. The next scenario is if you pull your cameras down and there's no blackout and no Toy Bonnie. You want to try and get rid of any vent animatronics before the next 1.5 interval, since all vent animatronics will leave after 5 seconds. But make sure you don't wait too long, since with no blackout and no Toy Bonnie blackout, the timing with Foxy will be extremely strict. No matter what the situation is, you need to make sure that you're getting back onto that 1.5 to 5.5 cycle, since going off cycle will give an animatronic the chance to put on your cameras after a second or two, usually resulting in the music box running out. Fuck. Oh, we went off cycle, dude, and we're dead. We're literally dead. Yep. With all of that said, here's how I did on my FNAF 2 1020 run. I hate this move. You know what you do? You know what you do when he comes- Fuck! <laughs> Bro, right? He's coming towards you. He's done, he's done. Rest of the night, he's gone. He's not that big. Bro, honestly, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Now you know. Maybe, 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 maybe not.
One, two, three, four. Go. Okay. 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 Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! Dude! <laughs> Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! You're fired. <laughs> Dude! Dude, we fu- Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go out. I want to tell you guys a story. So, many, many, many years ago, I, when FNAF 2 first came out, there was the, the 2020 challenge, obviously. The strat was super, super basic. No one knew how to do it. Um, I tried and tried and tried and I could not do it when I was like, I don't know how old at that point. I even have a, a Steam screenshot because there's a, there's a, cheat you can do where you um you you hold on to freddy's nose and you press on um, cd plus right and that skips the night like it's a it's like a developer cheat code it skips the night a steam screenshot right here saying i finally v golden freddy mode i never v golden freddy mode i lied to everyone all my friends and then in 2020 I went back with with my one my one my, my homie Xander Gaming Five. Go subscribe to him, and we tried to beat um, FNAF 2, 2020, every single day for hours. This is why I have I have 44 hours in this game, okay? And we couldn't do it. No matter it just it was it just seemed impossible. We could not do it. And now finally, in 2023 for YouTube. And sh huge shot, shooter 25, my man. Huge shout outs. It's over. I finally did it after this many, many years, dude. Oh my god. Let's go, dude. Oh my god. I'm sure FNAF 3. Everyone says 3 is easier than 2. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. If you enjoyed this video or found this guide at all useful, please consider liking and subscribing. It helps out a bunch, especially for a small channel like myself. I'll expect the FNAF 3 video to be releasing within one to two days, so look out for that. But as always, thank you for watching. Peace. Integration. <laughs> that should be good.